you all for coming tonight. I'm sure we'll have a wonderful evening. <clears throat> Thought was coming to me to talk a little bit about hypothetical thinking tonight. Sometimes we We'll say things like, hypothetically speaking, we do this with our hands too, you know, to kind of say, you know, it's, it's just hypotheticals now. And <clears throat> that's the addiction of this world is, is when the mind is asleep and dreaming of a world on reality, it just is stuck in hypotheticals. It's, that's the only way it knows how to think. It's always thinking about hypotheticals in the future or actually thinking about the past even as if it could have been different. The coulda, woulda, shouldas. Oh, if I had only and only and only then I'd be in much better position. And. Um, I'd like to explore together tonight too, just to begin to take a look at, at why this is an addiction. And it takes a bit of looking at very closely to start to see that, that actually hypothetical thinking has never brought you lasting peace of mind. It always brings concern and complexity and analysis and all the mechanisms that block you from the truth of what is. And uh, it's because this idea that, that the future is somehow different than the past, and it's, it's even potentially going to be different. And there comes a point when you start to see that all of this hypothetical thinking is really the same. It's the same addiction, it's the same problem. It doesn't matter whether you aim it at the past or the future, it's the same defense against the now. As if there were past causes and there will be future consequences and if you can change things in the world for the better, have a, make a better world, have a better life. Except it's like a wheel that just goes round and round and it doesn't really bring any sense of contentment, that feel of spinning round and round. And uh, hmm. I'd like to invite you to just go with me in that tonight. If, if there's anything in your mind that has just been whirling around like a broken record, like a pattern, to take a close look and just look underneath that to how does that serve peace of mind? How, how do these hypotheticals ever serve a state of being totally present, just to be willing to look and see, is it really serving me? Did it ever bring me anything? I certainly played it out in terms of ten years of university and learning things and degrees and trying to attain things and achieve conquer and I could only come to a point of, of happiness of just letting it all go, releasing all that, seeing that it was all much to do about nothing, it never came to anything. And that to be fully present is actually to feel vitality and joy and happiness and peace but it's, it's not attached to anything in the world. It's not 
attempting to you know, grasp something or hold something. It's a total release of all such attempts. And instead of dying, you actually live. You, you are alive in that state. You really discover firsthand that you didn't really lose anything. You didn't really sacrifice anything. There's really nothing to let go of. Except the idea of letting go. So I'd like to, for us to join together in that. Are you talking about letting go of all strategies? Or are you, when you sort of talk about hypothetical situations you're dreaming up, is it the same thing as strategies? So strategies for, are you talking about all strategies? Um, like, or is, um, you know, finding a more peaceful life? You could have strategy for, I mean, that's what A Course in Miracles is, is a bit of a strategy for finding a more peaceful life. When you say hypothetical, are you talking about just random ideas that never play themselves out, or are you talking about all strategies? Yeah, I, I would say the Course is a, is a strategy to end all strategies, <laughs> and that's fair game. You know, it's like, well, if I'm not totally peaceful, I probably could use the strategy to end all strategies, but in the end, it, I'm saying it more in all inclusive nature of that. Like for example, we we had a meeting this afternoon and uh, and it was just a kind of an expression session for people to bring up their uh, feelings and experiences because it seems like whatever it is in this world that's that grabs the attention or that seems to be dramatic in any way that that Honestly, there's a lot of hypothetical thinking going on underneath that issue or drama. And for me, I always thought truth is simple. There has to be a way to cut through the complexity and have a big aha, like, ah, oh, ha, ha, ha. Kind of really see that in a deep way. And um, I feel the deeper you go into this experience, not only do the hypotheticals start to fade away, there's just less attention put on them, and they kind of fade and fade in awareness, but then it actually flips to a point where you, you can't really understand them at all. You, you go so deep that, that somebody can be trying to explain something kind of in a linear, hypothetical way, and you, you can't really follow. You can't follow the storyline or the punchline anymore. And I say that's not a bad thing, that's, that's a good thing. You can't follow the stories. And, and yet I find that, that the spirit is immensely practical, so as long as there seems to be a belief in the future, the Spirit can even use that and give us guidance. You know, it's like guidance for the day. You're going to call so and so, and you're going to do this today and that. It can be, it can be given, but it's not a, a sense of a strategy of trying to figure out how the day is going to go. It's more just letting it be given, like being informed of it as you go go through it. Allowing things to occur and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and being inclined that way, and you use your thinking until until you're quiet enough to hear the Holy Spirit say, "Well, I have a better idea." Yeah. 
and then you, you follow the cue. Yeah. Like today we had a, a talk and there were some hypotheticals tossed about and so forth. That's, that's what got the conversation going, was a proposal and, uh, and then everyone expressing their emotions uh, or reactions or etc. to the proposal. And uh, in the end it, it just seemed to dissolve the proposal. Uh, <laughs> You know, it was almost like a, just a lead-in, a starting point, and then the, the, the proposal seemed to dissolve. And, you know, I feel like that's how it goes in our life. Uh, whether we think we have relationship difficulties, or financial difficulties, or health issues, or questions about the meaning of life, or anything like that, ultimately I think that the spirit is just there to dissolve the questions. And, and leave us with a sense of certainty and peace. As if we never really knew what was going on, and we finally get wise. You know how they call it Zen beginner's mind? It's, this was to be the, the most advanced. <laughs> it's beginner's mind. Because it's so... Where somebody does something that seems extraordinary, and they go, oh, you've never played this game before, it's beginner's luck. You're clueless and you couldn't possibly do that well, but it just was a given. So, yeah, that's what I feel like it's we're getting into. You're not suggesting that we stop thinking. Are you? Oh, maybe you are. <laughs> are you? <laughs> well, there's a part in the Course Workbook where Jesus says, Now today we practice the highest form of meditation. It's going to be interesting to, what he's going to have after that line, the highest <laughs> form of meditation. Like, what is possibly going to say after that? I was curious, needless to say, when I first got to that. And then he says, here it is. Try not to think of anything. Uh, the highest form of meditation. That's why we have visualizations. That's why we have mantras. That's why we have a bunch of other things, because the highest is the most difficult for the monkey mind, for the untrained mind. Try not to think of anything. So ultimately, that's the, that's the direction that we're heading in. But we want to be very practical, so we're going to, you know, look at it <laughs> step by step. <laughs> but, uh, I guess that's the, I mean, for untrained mind, all this hypothetical thinking is all the ego chatter, right? The ego, mm -hmm. that's, the, the, that's the ego making its many plans, and so you're encouraging a conversation around what it would be like to not have the ego be in charge, I guess. Just loves to make plans, right? <laughs> right. Okay. And really, that's really the goal of this community, however you define it, but it's just if we talk in terms of basic terms, that the goal is to, to have such a joining, such a deep connection, such a trust, in the spiritual guidance that that you become completely guided, a hundred percent guided. It's not saying the world has to disappear, it's saying that you can behold it from a place of, of alignment, of complete alignment. Don't just do something, stand there. <laughs> Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, that would be a good 